you don't even watch it or not even tempted to watch it. That's great. But today I'm going to share with you something that is just as dangerous that you might be allowing into your life even now. That might sound extreme, but let me explain. Before we jump in, my name is Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I equip you to follow Jesus daily. I make videos every single week, so subscribe so you don't miss any of them. Okay, let's get into it. Now, when we think about somebody that's addicted to pornography or they, they use it quite frequently, maybe they call themselves a Christian, maybe they are a Christian, um, there's this fight going on within their soul. There's this fight going on actively because they realize, hey, I have a problem. This is not cool with me and this is not cool with God. So there's that understanding that something needs to change here. Maybe that doesn't mean that they're actually beating it or they're um, overcoming it in the moment. Maybe they're falling into it more often than they're actually finding victory. But in their heart, they know what's going on. They know this is a problem and they're making steps. Maybe they're just small steps, but active steps to overcome it. So they're getting desperate. They're making things, they're doing things that might seem a little bit more drastic to people looking from the outside, but to them it's necessary and it's worth it because they understand the severity of the problem. There's that understanding of what is truly going on. That situation is still dangerous, but at least they understand that there's a problem. When we go and look at us here, the ones that would say, hey, I'm not addicted, I'm cool, I'm fine. We don't realize there's a problem, but there is. Something is subtly seducing our souls and what is it? Think about how much time you spend in consuming media of all kinds. So we're talking social media, we're talking TV, we're talking movies, we're talking music. Maybe you have a job that you can listen to podcasts or music all day. If, if that's the case, the vast majority of your day, you're spent consuming media. Maybe if that's not the case, even still, you're off time, your hours when you're at home or you're doing the dishes or you're taking out the garbage or you're just doing nothing, you're consuming some kind of media. You're scrolling on TikTok, you're scrolling on Instagram Reels, you're liking photos, like you're taking in, you're consuming media almost all the time. Now, I wanna ask you, and I want you to be honest with me, make a rough estimate of how much of that content um, that you're consuming is sexually provocative material. Think about it for a second. Okay, how much is it? Think about the podcast you listen to. Maybe it's not directly or overtly sexually provocative. That's the whole point of the video. But is it included in there? Is that included in the podcast? Is that part of the, the jokes that they're making? What about the music that you're listening to? What percentage of it is it? And when you think about it, maybe you'd say, oh, maybe like 5%, maybe like 10%, 25%, maybe, maybe, maybe even like 3%. I want to ask you a serious question. Like, what do you think that material is doing to you? What do you think those sexually provocative jokes or that music or um, the, the imagery used? It's like, is that good for your soul? Is that good for you? You'd probably say, well, if you're a Christian, you say, no, that's not good for me. I, I know that. I, I know that's not, that's not going to be building me up, but it's such a small portion. If I were to give you a cup of water and I were to offer it up to you and say, hey, I just poured this glass of water for you. I know you're, you're pretty thirsty. You can go ahead and drink it and you bring it up to your mouth, and just as you bring it up to your mouth, I say, oh, well, yeah, by the way, I actually got like a spoonful of toilet water that I just poured in there as well, just to add a little bit of spice to it. Um, I hope that's no big problem. You would be rightfully disgusted because it doesn't matter that 99% of this water is good. It's been contaminated by something that is disgusting. Now I get it. It can be easy to make excuses for the type of content that we're consuming. Hey, it's only like 2% of what's going on in this podcast. It's not a big deal. I, I'm a strong Christian. I can deal with it. I just kind of skim past that stuff. It doesn't affect me. It's all good. And I was in the exact same boat. I listened to numerous comedy podcasts throughout my late teens. And just as I was at work listening to these podcasts and I find them so funny and I really enjoyed the humor in it. But then there'd be times, maybe 10 minute periods, five minute periods where they go on tangents of really kind of sexually perverse, you know, lines of thinking and they laugh about it. And then maybe they'd move on to something else. Now, if somebody were to ask me at the time, Isaac, why are you listening to that? I would say, hey, I get that that's not the best thing to listen to, but at the same time, I'm a strong Christian. I know that that's wrong. I wouldn't say anything like that, and it's not a big deal that I'm listening to it. Like, it'll be over soon, so it's not a big deal. You know what happened that really caught me off guard is I began to start to laugh at those things that they were saying, and I began to kind of think up my own jokes in that context too, my own dirty jokes or laugh at other people's dirty jokes in person, things that I would never laugh at before, but because I had trained my conscience to be okay with it, that this is something that I can consume in you know good accord with God, 
that I'm okay. The Bible talks about guarding your heart. And we got to be honest with ourselves when we say, are we really guarding our heart? Are we letting intruders in through the back door or through, through the window because it's not a big deal or there's not that many of them? It's like, no, but really, why are we doing this to ourselves? We know that these passions wage war on our souls. We know that God hates sexual immorality. He hates those jokes. He hates that imagery. He hates sexual perversion and sexual distortion of God's good design. So why are we going to play into it? Is it just for our own personal enjoyment, just because we're having a good time? How like lightly do we value our relationship with God if we're, if we're going to just let this impede on our relationship with him? Maybe, maybe you, like me, think about being married one day and you think, you know, when I'm married, I will do everything to protect my marriage. I will do whatever it takes to make sure that it is strong and it is healthy and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. But then we turn to our relationship with God here and now and we say, ah, well, I, I enjoy watching this or I like watching this movie. I know it's got plenty of nudity in it. I know it's like <laughs> not, you know, God glorifying at all, but still like it's not a big deal and, you know, God, God's okay with it, whatever. Really? We, we're so passionate about this idea of um, protecting our, mar our future marriage or our current marriage and, and, and our spouse. And yet when we turn to God and our relationship with God, we're just so quickly to just let, let things impede on it that we're, are going to cause walls of, of just disconnection between us and God. Then it could put strongholds in our life that are like, man, I, I got to kind of sort through this muck and this mire. I can't really see God that clearly right now because... I'm still enticed by sin and my affections are towards sin and not to God. I had to be really honest with myself and I gave up pretty much all the comedy podcasts that I was listening to because they were just so filled with sexually provocative jokes and it just wasn't good for my heart, wasn't good for my soul. That's not, those aren't the kind of things that I want my brain to be thinking about or my mind to be going or for me to laugh at. I don't think that's God glorifying. That was tough because that really brought a lot of enjoyment and pleasure to my life. And the idea of giving it up was kind of sad. Hey, and maybe you think I'm blowing stuff out of proportion. Isaac's not a big deal, man. I guess you're just not really a strong Christian, man. Uh, it's okay. You know, you got to do what you got to do, but it's fine for me. Like, okay, if that's how you feel, that's okay. I, I don't need to try to convince you ultimately that my standards are, are the perfect standards. All I'm saying is I want you to be careful because these things are not neutral. It's not that it just kind of goes in one ear, out the other. It is impacting you. I think about when a few years ago... I was really not eating well. I was eating like junk food all the time. I'd binge like at 12 p.m. I'd get home and I'd just go crazy on like chips or like wh whatever else, like multiple peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> it was just, it, it was a wreck, right? And I didn't feel good when I woke up in the morning. I felt awful. I was gaining a bunch of weight. I was not working out at all. And it was just awful. I was fueling myself with something that actually didn't really nourish me. And the idea of giving it up was really burdensome. I was like, I don't want to stop doing this. This is this is great. And when I'm in the moment, it's awesome. Uh, it's part of my routine. I really enjoy it. And it's probably not that big a deal. I'm young and uh, most of the other aspects of my life are fine. But here's the thing. I, I did get to the point where I realized this is going to have side effects later on. Like I can't see what it's doing to me now, but I know it's not good. So I stopped. And what happened? Well, initially it was hard, right? But then eventually it became less and less burdensome because I stopped craving the junk food and, and the binging that I did before. And instead I was actually just enjoying the results of actually being nourished, of eating good food and feeling full and feeling refreshed and not feeling awful all the time. And that brought a lot of joy and kind of perpetuated this positive cycle of wanting to continue on that path instead of if I were to just continue and say well it's too burdensome like I don't want to give up the stuff I already have you need to realize first that maybe you don't see what it's doing to you now but you got to look longer down the road you got to look further down the road to realize have a little wisdom here and say okay this isn't neutral in my life and this isn't a positive thing that I'm taking this in. So why am I going to do this? Why do I want to just continue to invite this in my life? I'm not saying you can't watch videos anymore or listen to podcasts, but I'm saying let's reorient our attention and our affection off of these things that are not going to be good for us onto things that are. 
This is how the Bible addresses the sexual temptation that we might experience. For the lips of the forbidden woman drip with honey. Her speech is smoother than oil, but in the end she is a bitter wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Sheol. The key point of this video, honestly, is that we got to stop putting pornography in its own box and everything else in like a, okay, you know, Christian discernment type of box. No, 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 it's not just that pornography is waging war on our souls and it is the seductive uh, woman that has honey on her lips and that is leading you to death. It's not just pornography. Actually, that box is a lot bigger than we would expect, but instead we've kind of um, numbed our conscience because, oh, it's not on, uh, you know, the, the porn website. No, it's just on YouTube. It's not a big deal. It's just on TikTok. It's not a big deal. Instagram. No, no, no. We got a, we want a, a sensitive conscience, something that we know where, okay, God, this is not honoring to you. I'm going to look away from this. I'm going to scroll away from this. I'm going to block this person. I'm going to unsubscribe from here. I'm going to stop listening to this podcast because I care about walking in holiness. I choose holiness over honey, over instant gratification. I want a, a lifelong life legacy of choosing God over sin. And God is going to empower me to do that. When I walk in the spirit, I will not gratify the desires of the flesh, but we need to pray to God. We need to ask him, Hey God, this is where I'm at. I'm sorry for not, not really acknowledging that this has been a sin in my life. I'm making excuses for it. I'm sorry for that. And God, I want to follow you in this area. Empower me by your spirit to do that every single day. That's where you begin in repentance and a renewed faith in God for him to strengthen us as we seek to follow him daily. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, I ask you to check out the link in my description and check out Patreon today. It is the way that people support my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily. If that's a mission that you want to get behind, if you enjoy the content, if you want access to all sorts of exclusive um, rewards, you can check that out down below. I would love to see you there. It would be a huge blessing. Until next time, I'll see you later. God bless.